Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name is Mark Taylor, and today we're going to be working on carving the face. Face of some characters here. And you can see the profile of this guy. And it seems like all the carvers I know all say the same thing. Carving the eyes is the hardest part. And if you do a good job of it, you can really bring it to life. Now, I've been a bird carver for years and years and just started doing characters. So we're, we're learning together here. <laughs> um, some good points of reference. Um, the Character Carvers of America, sometimes referred to as the CCA. Uh, here's a book that they put out <clears throat> that has beautiful carvings in them. You have to reach a certain level to get into the Character Carvers of America. So um, just not anybody can join. You have to be at a certain level of being able to produce characters to get into their group. But a lot of their uh, members do videos, teach classes, so that's a resource. Um, Another one is uh, the International Woodcarvers Association. <clears throat> now, they, they have meetings on Saturday at 3 o'clock and, and check on that because it could change. But um, for the past few months, that's where I've seen them and I've watched these meetings. They teach uh, processes in carving, just not characters, all kinds of stuff, but they have a lot of character carvers in there. So uh, that's another resource. Uh, Chip Chats is a magazine <clears throat> that is full of good information. So that's another resource. Okay, so let's get started on carving. Now, <clears throat> this one was a square block of wood, and I had to create the angle. Well, actually, so was this was square. And I had to create this angle here to be able to get the nose. Now, I practiced a bunch on just blocks of wood like this. And I use the corner to achieve the nose, because the nose sticks out the furthest. Um, it's a time saver. But here's a tip. <clears throat> you want the grain running in this direction. You want the grain running like this to give the nose stability. If, if you go in and the grain is like this and you try to carve the nose here, it's, it's just going to snap right off because the nose is, is going to be uh, thin and, and not stable at all if you, if you use cross grain like this. So you want the grain running directly into the corner and then you put the nose on there and it, it'll be much stronger. <clears throat> all right, here's a... I said we're learning together, right? So here's some faces that I've done carving. Uh, these are... Uh, about an inch and a half by an inch and a half square and so I started with what looks like this and the way I think is do a bunch of them get get good at it um, try different things try to get different expressions um, I watched one of the character carvers uh, talk about adding instead of making a straight line and, and keeping the face straight um, incorporate curves into the face to bring in interest I thought that was very interesting because I'd never heard that before so here's just a few real quick little things I did, maybe 15 minute, I call them 15 minute uh, maquettes. Um, that's a term that the clay sculptors will use. A maquette is a study. Um, so <clears throat> I've got a little bit of practice in, and so now we'll get started with actual carving on this guy. All right, I tell you, before we get started, let me just show you, show you some training aids that I bought on Amazon. This is a, a cast head and it, it's the skull with the muscles on top without skin and this this can really help you understand the muscle structure underneath the skin it's very helpful and I think it was it was under twenty dollars so as as you're trying to achieve a more lifelike face that can really help um, I have a, a couple of standing models here one side skin, one side uh, is a skeletal with muscle on top without the skin, and uh, you can really see all of them, the muscle structure. I have both male and female, very helpful, not that expensive, cheaper than a high-quality carving knife. So things you should check out if you're going to be carving human figures. So let's see. The hat's going to sit right about at the brow line. Make the brow line right here. That's the brow line. Come up to the brow line. About the middle of the face, the bottom of the nose. A 
We'll round off the chin a little bit. <clears throat> now this angle from the tip of the nose to the chin, what, what I tend to do is, is I'll push the, the chin out too far. And the chin is actually way behind where the nose should be. So if, if you look at where that is, the chin is out too far. Oh, let, let me show you really quick. I found this, gee whiz, years and years ago. I, was, I had a paper route when I was young. And, and this is part of a pipe. And it has a uh, male's face carved into it. And that has always had an influence on me. I always wondered how how did they do that, and I and I tried and tried and tried, uh, but through watching YouTube, uh, studying books on the human figure, studying having studied figures like these, all have helped. But that this was my first influence on trying to recreate the human face. An old pipe. <laughs> Just kind of smooth smooth this out a little bit. down a little bit to the mouth it's gonna be about there now if you're trying to achieve a likeness i i wouldn't try it attempt it if you're new because uh well you can try it but it can be frustrating to achieve a likeness in carving when you're new at it um it's it's a lot of work it's a lot of studying uh understanding anatomy um the the outer shape of, of things, recognizing something, the outer shape of something is the most important. That's where you get the immediate, oh, that's so-and-so. You could, so if a family member, you could see probably a silhouette of them and go, oh, that's, you know, that's my family member, just on a silhouette. Underneath the lip. And that chin is way too prominent right now. I believe I need to take it back even more. Helps to go a little bit at a time. All right, so I'm going to come down either side of the nose. So here's the brow line that we've established. And I'm going to come down wide on the nose. So we got plenty to deal with. You don't make the nose too small. Because the face has so many shapes that change so quickly, hills and caverns, it's difficult. The human face is difficult. The reason why artists paint, carve, and draw the human body, it's hard. <laughs> the human body is a, a beautiful thing to draw and to, uh, to carve and to paint, but it is difficult. That's why artists throughout the years have always worked and studied and then when they get good, they brag, and rightfully so, uh, when they can paint, draw, carve, sculpt the human body. These little 45s, about a 45 degree angle up on the wings of the nose, especially on a male. Now, <clears throat> on the face, you want to be careful not to make any of your cuts really, really deep. It's better to take your time and to do shallow cuts because those lines will, will show up later. All your stop cuts will show up later if they're too deep and uh, and they come across as wrinkles. So if you're, I guess if you're doing an old person, it's okay, except for the wrinkles may not be in the places the wrinkles should be. And I've heard some people will wash the carvings when they're done in water so the wood will expand and close those those little cuts <clears throat> best not to put them there to begin with some people um, use alcohol and spray it like an old cabinet maker's trick to raise the grain and they also say that that helps close up some of those knife cuts it's best just to take your time and try not to put too many deep stop cuts in to begin with. 
<clears throat> now, you kind of want to start with trying to develop the eye sockets, and, and you want to kind of make them like uh, the old Ray-Ban sunglasses, the aviators. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch Top Gun. Those aviator sunglasses that uh, Tom Cruise wears. I had a pair when I was young. Switched off to my craft knife here, number 11, blade. This also helps reduce the depth of the stop cut. And we'll go down a little bit, but I, I don't want to go down too far because I still need to make the dome of the eyeball. Now, when you're doing a carving this small, uh, that can be a little tricky, but we'll, we'll see what we can pull off here. And I kind of did it with these, but that is a bit much bigger. Yeah, we'll see. Head still looks a little on the big side. Now you can continue to take down the head and then come back later and just reduce the size of the hat. Not a problem. And depending on how refined, refined you want to make this carving, are you going to sand it or not? <clears throat> That'll make a difference too. Uh, not sanded, and this one is sanded. So you get the smoother lines that is that are that's more characteristic of our faces, but then you kind of lose that folk look, folk art look. So there's some decisions to be made. So I'll keep working on narrowing the nose down, but I'm going to take my time with it. The cheeks in here. There'll be a smile line that, that comes. I'll go ahead and inscribe that now. Here. So it comes from the upper part of the wing of the nose down to outside the, just beyond where the lips are. The, the corner of the lips. And then on the bottom, the lower lips are, are shorter than the upper lips. They kind of tuck in up underneath. And then there's another line that drops down just below them. And we'll cut that in. And uh, that makes a difference. We'll also go into the corner of the eyes, and this is going to be a very deep cut here in the corner of the eyes on both sides. And in that wing of the nose, a little triangle in there. We'll take that out, and that'll make a difference as well. Okay, I'm doing a little work on him off camera, taking down the hat a little bit because the hat really wasn't in proportion. A little work on the face. And what I'd like to talk about right now is this space below the nose where the where the mouth lives this is a compound curve here and let's let's get Scully over here so we're compound this way and this way and this is another one of those tricky spaces because of the compound curve I would try to achieve this shape first before putting the lips in so this comes around and then out with the chin and of course you're coming off that sharp underside of the nose here so with a with a mustache uh, it's a little easier of course with the beard and mustache uh, it becomes a lot easier in, in my opinion uh, there's a lot you can do with the mustache and beard to uh, enhance a carving but it's it's more difficult to to achieve that compound curve and, and these hills and valleys, which are smooth. Sometimes if you're doing like folk art, the or flat plane carving, the, the cuts are uh, you know, straight in and it's harder to achieve this look if you don't sand it. So you can, let me see if I can profile them here and you can really see how this comes out. And you can also see how far this comes in and how you can view the eye from the side I think I've just about achieved that with this guy. His nose coming in, his eyes being visible from the side. This guy's still working on him. Let 
I've drawn in the Ray-Ban sunglasses on them that, that you basically need before you cut the eye. I get this, this area flat and I'll cut around this and relieve outside of that, creating a positive piece of wood sticking up there to carve in the eyeball. Something I did find helpful is I have some gouges here, flex cut gouge, and this is a, a U gouge. Let's see if it has a number on it. I don't see one, but I came up into the eye socket here and, and across and I found that useful. This I just did with a straight knife. Now, I, I do encourage wood carvers to play with clay and to, and to learn how to make a wire armature and play with clay to, uh, it's such a flexible medium and a forgiving medium to use. And it, it will help you, especially if you're gonna do a carving that has motion in it. You're making your own uh, pattern, you're creating your own work of art. Instead of working off of a pattern, you're gonna create your own pattern uh, and there's several websites worth checking out. First YouTube channel, Breath of Life with Josh Foreman. He is a professional artist. He is very good at what he does. He's an excellent instructor. And he has a series of Sculpture 101. Check it out. Next is Proco 3D. Excellent classes on human figure and uh, doing portraits. They're very good classes, even armature building, worth checking out. So let me give you just a, a little quick helpful tip. I have a one and a half inch chip brush here and I cut the bristles down. What is that? Maybe a little more than a quarter inch here. And, and it makes a good little scrubber to get rid of all the little chips and the, the loose pieces. Um, I've seen, uh, I think it was uh, Doug Linker who uses a little shoe brush like this. Clean, of course. This one has uh, polish on it, so it leaves a brown mess, kind of. But uh, less than a dollar works beautiful all right so our next step is we're going to go for the eyeball itself here and the way we do that we've already created this shape here and relieved around it let me get this guy back on here there we go so we've created that eye socket shape and relieved up to it. So we did a stop cut, relieved up to it. And we're going to round down and round out this shape. And that will start to give us that concave look that we're going for, for the, the surface of the eyeball. No, your knife does need to be very sharp, so get it on the strop before you do this. You definitely don't want to be crushing these fibers uh, when you're doing these 
cuts around the eye. Need to have an extremely sharp knife. And you want to do this top, top, the top and bottom of the eyeball to round it. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking the knife blade into the corner of the eye by the nose and plunging it in straight in deep into that triangle that's in this shape and then remove that piece. <clears throat> Does two things, pushes this corner back and it starts to create the round shape. Then you want to go to the outside corner of the eye, not as deep, but you want to remove a little triangle from there. And you're starting to get the roundness, the shape of the eyeball here. Now I've seen a lot of different carvers do this a lot of different ways. Uh, it's all personal preference. There's no right or wrong way to do it. If you can get it to look right, it's right. All right, so as you can see, I've come in on the cheeks a little bit, the upper and lower lips are, are a 45 degree angle. The lower lips are shorter than the upper lips. They kind of tuck in behind. There's our profile. Now I've sanded this to make it easier for you to see. As you can, as you can see when it's, when it's not sanded, it's a little harder to make out where all the lines are. But here you can clearly see uh, where all the lines are. And this is just a guide really to, to give you some tips. It, it's not a step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial on carving the face, but just some tips to help you along. Okay, getting ready to put the eyelids in on this one. And just for reference, this one's sanded now, so we can see the lines much better. I actually took the cheeks down because once I sanded it, the cheeks were out of proportion. And now they're much more realistic. Now, I will be taking some classes uh, from award-winning character carvers. And... So you're going to see, obviously, changes, improvements once I take these classes. And I'll share some tips with you on that. Well, one of the dangers of having cross grain for the hat, that's why I did this hat as an insert, is it doesn't take much. And it, uh, and it split off. That's okay, I'll glue it back on. And, uh, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so one of the things when something splits like this, the grain will line up. So it'll register this piece right where it belongs. I'm gonna use a little bit of Quick and Thick by Type Bond. And it is pretty quick compared to uh, regular wood glue sets very quickly so don't use it if you don't if you uh, if you need open time it's not the glue to use but if you want it quick that's what it's for so you see how it lines right up we'll squeeze a little glue out this will dry clear So I was going to do a, a watery acrylic stain on this character, but um, the glue will resist. The glue will resist the uh, the paint, and so this will be a solid, opaque hat for sure. We'll just hold this for about two or three minutes and we'll be done. 
All right, as far as the clothes go, I would simply draw where I would, would want to put a line, let's say the belt, and the belt would carry on across back here, and a V-gouge, and I would just follow the line. Bracing my hands, so if I slip, I don't go far. And I would just relief cut up to those lines to make it smooth. that will fit in this small area like so the clothes are pretty easy to do really they get as you add in wrinkles and things like that, that's where you can really get creative and start to bring a lot of realism into the clothes that they wear. I basically did the same thing with his coveralls. I was working on his face and and uh, the eyebrow literally just crushed and and came off because I let my gouge get a little bit dull, uh, and so I'm got to work on this face again. So what I'm gonna do is if you want to see these guys finished I'm going to put them on my Instagram channel and I'll put my Instagram channel up now this is my Instagram so go there I put all my finished pieces of work up here and uh, you guys can go there and see it I hope you enjoyed this Please like, share, subscribe. I'll see you next time.